Hey everyone, welcome back to another set of videos in which we actually try to configure and slash develop uh, EFT documents as I had promised in my previous video. Today I will be developing a custom layout for an EFT document. If you don't know what an EFT document is, it's an electronic fund transfer. Make sure you actually go to my previous video uh, or one of my other videos in which I configured EFT layout or EFT document in Business Central. As a functional consultant, you are required to configure uh, everything that comes out of the box for a client. But today, instead of us developing a EFT layout in Visual Studio Code by coding, we will be actually uh, developing in full on quotation uh, an EFT layout using a bank account from uh, Google. So Google actually has a readily available uh, layout that are specifically associated with uh, the specific banks that your client would uh, be associated with. Uh, so before I jump into the actual uh, development size configuration of an EFT layout, I will go, like to go back to how uh, part of a step where you actually configure EFTs and in that video I actually mentioned you something about data exchange definition so you can find that right here. These EFT layouts are actually built in. Uh, they come with the out of the box uh, functionality and most of them are US related. Uh, since I am from Canada I actually had to custom build this uh, EFT layout using the uh, layout PDF file from uh, one of the banks. In my previous video, I actually uh, configured and developed an EFT layout, but due to uh, confidentiality, I decided to actually walk through the same process and not show the actual PDF document that I'm using. But for you to use or to access a PDF document that actually specifically gives you the details of all the information that you need to make a custom EFT layout, just go on Google, write EFT layout and the name of the bank and then press enter. You should be able to get a PDF file for it. So once you have that PDF file and you are successfully able to configure to a point where you need to create a data exchange uh, definition, then I will show you how you can actually create a data exchange uh, definition code for a custom EFT layout. So simply search uh, data exchange definition and you'll get back on the same page that I was uh, showing you under a bank card uh, of your client or your company. Uh, these, uh, some of them are built in, they were coming out of the box. Uh, this one is the one that I actually created for our learning purposes. So when you create a new, a card will open like this. You can give it a name, the code, the file type. The type is obviously EFT payment export because you will be exporting the layout after you make a payment or in a payment journal. And the file encoding is Windows, not MS-DOS or anything like that. This is exactly where you will be inputting all the information that you get from that PDF file. So just to start going in a little bit more detail on how you can do that, I will start with the header because the very first column or first layout is the header in that PDF document. I will start with the header. The column count is 16. So that means that you will have 16 lines here as shown. So these need to reflect each other, obviously. And that information you should get from your client, from the bank, and from the PDF. So it's not some number that you just come up with. All of this is coincides with the PDF document. It's a matter of you taking that information and translating it into Business Central. So the very first record, uh, or the very first line, is the record count in that PDF. So I also put a record count here. The data type is always text in every case that we uh, do in this uh, configuration class development. The length for me is six, which is a field size in my PDF. So that's why the length of the record count is six in this case. And I don't believe I have any constants here. Exactly, this is not a constant because I don't see any constant in the PDF. Uh, but if you were to see a constant like this HDR, 
it should be in the data requirement. So in our case, the uh, constant belongs to the transaction code and the transaction code has a length of three, which is a field size three. So you follow the similar uh, process, similar procedure that I have told you, and you construct your EFT based on that. To go to the next step is the footer. So if you were to go to a footer and then in your PDF document, uh, I have a footer with the specific name of a trailer record, for instance. You can also call a footer. Some banks call it trailer record, some call it footer. Uh, nothing uh, uh, really matters at this point in terms of the naming, but because the EFT does not count towards the naming, but it's the information that actually exists in the uh, definition. So the very first line, as always, is the record count. And with the record count, I have a field size which coincides to a length of six, and I do not have any constants here. The Z constant right uh, in the next line is the record type. So record type, which should have a field size with the length of one. So you, as I can see, or as you can see, the length is always here one and the constant here is Z. So you keep going through that exercise and you take all the information that's relevant. You save that you continue your configuration and then you build a payment general. Um, uh, you make a payment and you generate an EFT file and then you send that out to the bank of the client or to the client so they can send it out to the bank and then they will give you um, their notification, their updates on what is uh, wrong with the EFT file, what needs to be correct, and then it could be just a matter of you switching things around, maybe adding decimals, uh, maybe adding more zeros in, in uh, the values or the amounts that gets retrieved from a journal line. So with that, uh, I will leave the curiosity to you. And if you have any other question regarding this, I can definitely help you out, go in a little bit more detail on what you need to do, the things that you would have to ask your client. So with that, I will conclude my uh, video for today and I will see you next time.